The Dissolve Shader is a really nice effect to use when you want to spawn or despawn something into your scene in a stylized way. And it's actually a very simple shader to create. And if you're new to Shader Graph, then this is a really perfect place to start because you'll learn the basics of how shaders work, as well as some really common nodes you're going to be using. Ready? Let's go. We're working in a 2D scene here, so let's create a new Shader Graph, and we'll choose Sprite Lit Shader Graph and call it Dissolve. The only difference between lit and unlit is that unlit will ignore any 2D lights in your scene and just display normally all the time regardless of your lighting. So choose whichever one is right for your project. And right away before we start, let's create a new material using this shader. And we can do that easily by just right clicking on the shader and creating a new material from that. That will create a material with that shader already applied to it. And let's go ahead and apply that material to our player. If it's layered like mine, you'll need to apply it to multiple places and this is looking not so great, so let's go ahead and fix that real quick and open up our shader. Create a new texture 2D called main text. Sprite renderers are required to have a texture with the reference of underscore main text, so that's why we name it this way. And let's sample that and plug the RGBA into the base color and the alpha into the alpha. And just so we can see what we're working with, let's select a sprite for our texture and it doesn't really matter what it is. And if you can't see it in the main preview, if you just change basically any value, it'll show up. And I'm really not sure what that's all about. But there you go, at least our sprite is looking normal again. So to start our dissolve effect, we're going to want some random noise to filter out some of our character's alpha. And how this will work is we'll combine the alpha of our sprite with its full alpha, so full white, with the alpha of our simple noise. Anything white is full alpha, and anything black is full transparency. So we start getting a slightly transparent look to our player here with this. But that's not what we want. What we want is a hard cutoff with no in-between states of transparency, and we can do that easily using the step node. So the step node will only accept any value above this number. So here with this low number, only the darkest parts of the noise actually show up as white. So now if we combine that instead over here, now we get that really nice cutoff we were looking for. And as we scroll through this number here, the more we can make it appear or disappear. And it's always good with this kind of thing to have as many options as possible that you think you might want. So let's create an exposed property and it'll be exposed by default, meaning we can tweak it in the inspector. Let's make it a float called dissolve amount, make it a slider between zero and 1.1 and default it to 0.5 so we can see what we're working with. Now, I do feel like this is a bit backwards because a dissolve amount should be fully dissolved at its full value and not dissolved at all at zero, I think. So let's inverse this by putting it into a one minus node. And now it's working the way that we want. All right, but we want a kind of glowing outline around the character, so let's do that next. And how we can do that is using another step node and just using a slight offset of our dissolve amount here and then subtracting one from the other to get what's left, which is just a little outline. So to visualize that, let's actually do it. Create another step node, and our simple noise will still act as the edge. And we want to add a certain outline thickness to it. So let's create an exposed float called outline thickness, make it a slider between 0 and 1, and let's default it to something small like 0 0.1, and plug that into the add node over here, and plug that finally into our step node. Now let's create a subtract node and we'll say if we take this one minus this one, we should start seeing a sort of outline being created. Now, in order to actually see this, we need to feed it into the end result. So let's deal with the color, then the alpha. So the color can't be plugged directly in anymore. Now we want to add this outline to our sample and plug that into the base color. For the alpha, we want to swap step nodes because this black here will be transparent, and then we're adding the outline around that, so that should make it perfect. So now we're multiplying our second step node with our original alpha to combine them and plug that into our final alpha. And now you can see we have a nice white outline around the dissolve area, and we can easily control the thickness of the line. Now let's just add some more options to pretty this up a little bit. First, it might actually be nice to be able to control our noise scale here. So let's create a float property called dissolve scale. A slider between zero and 500 should be good. And I'm going to default mine to 30 and plug that into our scale here. Next, it would be really nice to be able to control the color and the glow of this outline. So let's add a property called outline color. 
Default it to any color at full alpha and let's make it HDR, which will give us intensity settings to actually allow us to use glow. And in order to color something, you simply multiply the value you want to color by the color. So we'll multiply this by the outline color and plug that into the add up here. To add the glow, let's go up to our camera and ensure that we enable post-processing. Then we'll add a global volume to our scene. We don't have a profile, so let's go ahead and create one. And now we can add some bloom. I'll set the threshold to a little bit over one, otherwise anything white will glow. And I'll go with an intensity of six. So there you go, we have some glow. Now this next part is optional, but I think it makes it look a little bit better. If we zoom in here, you can see that our color is just kind of placing a tint on top of colors that are already there. And I'd rather this just be the pure color that I put in there. So what I want to do is subtract the outline out of this and then add the color back in on top of that. So with shaders, it's just math. White is one and black is zero. So if I take this and subtract this, the black portions don't remove anything because when you subtract zero, it doesn't do anything. So we subtract this white part out and that'll get rid of that color. Now we add it back in and if we save that, you can see that the color looks a little more pure now. So this basic effect has been covered many, many times before. So let's add a little bit more flair to this. So I wanna add a twirl in here and plug that into our simple noise. And let's add a float property called spiral strength. Let's make it a slider between zero and 100 and default it to five. And plug that into our strength input here. And now you can see it's totally changed our effect. If you don't want that, just enter it as a zero, but you can get all sorts of really, really neat effects by playing around with your values now. Quick sidebar, by the way, you can make a totally different kind of effect if you crank up your dissolve scale, leave your dissolve amount high, and let's get rid of this twirl, and instead add a tiling and offset node, and plug that into our noise, and let's scroll through our X slowly over time. There you go, anyways, I just thought that was cool. So let's put the twirl back in. And let's add one more thing as well. Add a UV node up here and let's split it. Think of this as our sprite and think of this as a kind of vector three, X, Y, and Z. So let's preview our green or our Y. Now let's plug this into a step node and create a float property called vertical dissolve, make it a slider between zero and 1.1 and default it to 0.5. Plug that into a one minus node because again, I want a zero to be no dissolve and our full value to be fully dissolved, not the other way around. And finally plug that into our step node. Now to get a bar going, we need to do the same thing that we did down here and make a second step node, but just add our outline thickness to it and then subtract the two from each other. Now we have to deal with alpha and color. So for the alpha, we want to multiply this by this. So everything black here will not be included and everything white will, and plug that into the alpha. For the color, again, we want to first add our outline color to this. So we do that with a multiply node. And then we want to add that on top of this and plug that in. Now you can see because my sprite is split into multiples, it's gonna do his feet, body, then head, which I actually find kinda cool. All right, let's just make some simple code to be able to test this. I mainly wanted to show the shader in this video, so I am going to go through this very quickly. So let's create a script called dissolve and add it to our player. Here are all the variables we're going to need and make sure that these string values match your reference in the shader. Now, since I have multiple sprites, I need to grab all the sprite renderers and then assign the materials one by one going through those sprite renderers. So now I'll create a quick coroutine to handle all of this. This is a vanish coroutine. So we're lerping our regular dissolve amount from zero to 1.1 and our vertical dissolve is going from zero to 1.1 as well. We'll then actually change those float values on our material each frame until our dissolve time is over. 
And let's add the option to use the regular dissolve and the vertical dissolve and add those checks in there as well. Now let's duplicate this and just flip the start and end values. And let's call vanish when we press the E key and we'll call appear when we press the F key. Now you can see we get this nice dissolve effect and we can choose whether we want to do the regular or the vertical or both. That's all I got. I hope you enjoyed. And by the way, my patrons get access to the source code and files of every tutorial on this channel on GitHub. So if you want access to that, head on over to Patreon. Like the video if you liked. Bye. I want to give a very special thank you to all of our Hall of Fame patrons, Jakob Yondok, Sandra Kessler, Darren Preen, Throbbing Wind, Fontaine Waite, Couch, Christopher Nichols, and Brainwaves to Binary, as well as our Early Access patrons, Zayama, Ken Waite, Mason Crow, Mr. D, Outdo Games, Yon, Liquid Egg, Alexander Prestis, Godsworn, Abdulaziz, Hamad Alanazi, Ober, Bill Guo, Alone on Mars, Code Jutsu, Merler, Ayash Sharma, and Jarrett Whitehead. If you choose to support us on Patreon, you can get early access to all of our YouTube videos, monthly alpha builds, and more.